It's been a long road to get to this point. First was Atlantis. Retrieving the power of the Galith, or the artifact of life. Second, we retraced the steps of the first shaman, making our way down into the depths of the temple to find the Totem of Time. And the third was completing the true path, emulating the Wheel of Life and Reincarnation in Buddhism. And by helping the Sita Bawawa, we are bestowed with the power over matter, the third and final legacy piece. With all three in tow, we can head back to the TSA, and what will happen next, we will see soon enough. Hello everyone, and welcome to the finale of Let's Play The Journeyman Project 3, Legacy of Time. I have it! I found the third artifact! You're just in time, Gage. The Portalis, they just entered Earth's orbit. It won't be long before they locate the TSA. Receiving a high-priority communication from the Sorolan cruiser Aquila. We have felt a great disturbance from the TSA. You have the legacy. If we have sensed it, believe that the Quotha lost no as well. We are sending Sorolan sentinels to assist you. Cortales have reached the outer shielding. All security teams prepared to intercept. I say again, the Cortales have reached Gage, the outer shielding. Gage, before everything gets even more chaotic, I, I just wanted to say, well, be careful. Gage, the three artifacts are projecting some kind of image. I recognize some of the elements. Remember the Sasequi symbol that the Sorolan ambassador showed us? This pendant is an ancient Sasequi relic that our archaeologists discovered on another planet. We believe this symbol is a Sasequi marking that represents their legacy. The true legacy might also bear this mark. I think we need to create that symbol by manipulating these artifacts. So, welcome to the final puzzle of the game. Dealing with the three pieces and what they're showing us right now. We better get some help with this, because, well, we can start flipping around stuff. Well, let's actually get some ground rules here. If I'm not mistaken, each artifact is projecting its forward face to create that central image. Hmm, all right. That Sosequi symbol must have a special meaning. If I were taking a Rorschach inkblot test, I would say it looks like a butterfly. Interpreted another way, it could possibly represent the struggle for the legacy. Notice the claw-like hands grasping for the three pyramid objects? Those could represent three races, all grasping for the powers of the legacy. Three races. Okay, so we have the Sorolans and the Quothalos. Who's the third? Before we continue any further, one last time for good measure. Alright, let's see what we can do here. So, we actually have a new symbol that we're able to use in order to interact with something. Rotation. We're able to rotate these pieces. Either we can rotate them to make another face show up in order to project its image, or we can rotate the face we're on now to make a different orientation, like so. Hmm. Looks like each of the faces are unique, and with three pyramid-shaped objects, each with four faces, carry the one, there are exactly 1,728 possible combinations. I assume there's at least one combination in there that will solve whatever test this is. Or this thing is unsolvable and we go absolutely drooling mad trying. 
Let's keep turning these pieces to see if there is some relationship that could help us. There's a lot of combinations. You see, with the whole being able to rotate it like so, we actually have three different orientations per face. Dealing with tetrahedrons here, tetrahedrons having four faces to them, which is like this, triangular shaped pyramids, four sides with three different orientations per side, that means 12 different kinds of symbols per pyramid. You can get a lot of combinations out of that. However, that seems like a lot to deal with in the beginning. So, one thing that the game actually doesn't really tell you about until you accidentally do it is that you can actually turn off faces, which is a bit intriguing. When you touch the front face of one of the artifacts, it stops projecting its image into the center. That could be extremely helpful. By turning off a piece, you can see how it affects the central image. It makes the puzzle a little bit easier to understand once you're dealing with one piece at a time, or at least two pieces, just to see how they interact with each other. And that's kind of how you're going to learn about how this puzzle works on your own if you do not want to use Arthur. This piece is kind of an interesting one because no matter how much you rotate it, it's going to stay in the same orientation. So, it, it's a bit of a static piece out of all of them. Now I understand how the image is being generated. The central image is a composite of all three artifact faces. It looks like the overlapping regions between any two pieces cancel each other out. And that's how this puzzle works, by overlap. You see how the face on this piece, with this piece, does not project that piece into the center? Same with the, these two pieces on the left, with the right artifact and the left artifact. That's an important rule to remember. Now with this first instance, we're just going to be learning about what Arthur is able to help us with. I think we need to focus our search. Instead of trying to solve this all at once, let's try to find a specific face that has the most elements on it. Once we nail down one of the faces, we only have to turn the other two artifacts. I think the most important concept for these artifacts is that two overlapping areas cancel each other out. But if a third artifact also has an element within the same region, then that shape will appear in the central image. That's also important as well. You have each piece canceling each other out, but a third won't be canceled out by the other two. We're going to finish this together, Gage. Now I think I have a pretty good idea of how to complete this. Let's concentrate one artifact at a time. Turn the lower left artifact until we find a correct piece. It's really at this point that Arthur is going to pretty much shepherd you into a solution, and he always starts with the left. Now there are four faces, but when you're rotating it this way, you're actually only getting three, so at least you have to rotate one face on its own before you're actually going to get the fourth face showing which is this one, in terms of that. And look at that, we already have almost all of the pieces there, but of course we don't still have that one. So this puzzle seems easy at first, but then all of a sudden it doesn't. Okay, Gage, it looks like you're having trouble with this puzzle. I think I have an idea for a solution. If you want more explicit help, touch my light bulb and we'll solve this together. I'm already touching your light bulb. I've been touching your light bulb a lot, and there's no innu innuendo with that. Now it's finally time to let Arthur shepherd you. Let's figure out with this left piece. So we gotta find a lot of elements. In terms of elements, he just needs a lot of symbols on it. Mm, that's three. That's a lot. Five. That's over half of the elements right there. Now you can actually see the overlapping rule in check here. You can see that this symbol here with this symbol on the top and here, it still gets projected even though all three of the shapes show that symbol. Hang on, Gage. The face on the lower left artifact looks like it has a lot of elements. 
That looks like a correct piece. Let's keep that side facing us and concentrate on turning the other two artifacts. Right, so when you get a correct piece in terms of Arthur, he will tell you to stop fiddling around with it and move on to the next piece. And he usually goes to the top. Always, actually. Gage, stop turning! The face on the lower left artifact is a correct piece. Now concentrate on turning the upper artifact. He also gets very enthusiastic about it. This alien technology is difficult, Gage, but let's not give up. I think we're pretty close. I'm sure our correct piece is part of the solution for this test. Our goal here is to create the Sosequi symbol, but the proper combination may not necessarily be direct. It may require you to take advantage of that region overlapping rule. That is correct. We need to look at the pieces from a different angle. When two pieces overlap, they cancel out, but when there is a third element in that same region, it appears in the center image. I believe the answer lies in that concept. Keep our correct piece facing us while manipulating the other sides. You want to look for pieces that overlap, but have the net result of projecting the proper symbol. And that's why Arthur really goes for lots of elements. Because the more elements you have on a piece, the more likely that this overlapping rule is going to work in your favor. For instance, if we throw it back to this one and then find the top artifact with a lot of elements, mainly this one, which has all three of the triangles inside and two pieces, it's another five out of the nine. Hang on, Gage. The face on the top artifact looks like it has a lot of elements. That looks like a correct piece. Let's keep that side facing us and concentrate on turning the other two artifacts. Gage, stop turning! That face on the top artifact is a correct piece. Now concentrate on turning the lower left artifact. Now let's get the large amount of elements back onto the left one, so now we have a lot of overlapping happening. Kind of. Actually, not really. Hmm. It's really the right artifact that's actually screwing us up now with its overlapping rule and everything. Good work, Gage! That's it! We now have two correct pieces. All that's left to do is to turn the lower right artifact. Now he focuses on the right. The static piece really isn't going to do much for us because no matter how much we turn it, it just stays the exact same. So, we have to find one last piece. Well, this looks like an interesting piece. You have all the correct faces showing, Gage. Now all you have to do is position them in the proper orientation. All you need to do is spin two of them, and you should soon have them correctly oriented. So, all three are in view, but they're not correctly positioned. So what we now have to do is pretty much see if any of the orientations actually make the image. And once the image is made, it automatically finishes the puzzle. And what happens when we finish the puzzle? Alright, let's leave it like this, because if I spin the top artifact now, this piece will actually head over to the top right of the triangle and overlap correctly so that that piece is showing. And then we'd have that piece showing, and I think we'd be good to go. Let's do it. There we go. Now, you might not believe this, but there's actually more than one solution than what Arthur shepherds you into. Two more solutions actually have to do with different rotations of the faces that you see here. You just have to kind of have to fiddle around with it, but in terms of Arthur's hint system, you... It kind of gives that small bit of openness in order to figure out how that actually is going to work. So instead of leaving the left part alone, we can actually just rotate that once or twice and move it into a different location and see what we can actually do about that. Let's move it down like this. But it's really all about experimentation at this point, In term once you are done with Arthur's hints and comments. Because you get solutions like this one. I 
And of course, one final different rotation will actually get you one last... Like so. However, just because Arthur shepherds you into those particular faces does not mean that you only have those ones to go with. You actually have a bunch of... You actually have another set of three solutions if you're willing to really get into the puzzle. For instance, you can actually see here that this piece is actually a correct piece. Which is very surprising. But that does mean that we're actually only be going to be using these bottom two pieces instead. The multiple elements still apply in terms of this one particular piece because at least we need a lot of elements. But instead of having the top piece as the one with a lot of elements, we also have the bottom right. There's a particular piece inside of here that actually has a lot of elements to it, and it's going to be this piece. It has four. Not, not as much as this one, but it's enough. So, technically, we actually have all of the correct pieces for our next solution. We just have to rotate them. And not rotate it like that. Rotate it on the bottom. And then we just have to rotate this piece finally. And voila! Now let's not do anything with this piece at all. And get back to our other pieces. A lot of elements there. Have to do that. And get the big piece there. Alright, and then we have these these two pieces correct now. And then we just have to move the bottom left. And voila! There's another solution. Now there's one final solution and one last area that this can actually go into. And that is there. And we haven't used this configuration of these two pieces yet. And then we just have to switch it one more time and that is our last solution. See you for the thrilling conclusion! The legacy was meant for all races! Blackwood! Quickly, give us the legacy! The Force of Oz will destroy us all if they claim it! The Lordwood Killers have no right to our legacy. Can't you see the cycle is happening again? Your two races are battling each other over something that's supposed to bring peace? I won't let you turn this place into another battleground. Know that the Sosequi have long since transcended your universe. Our legacy has waited thousands of years for its proper heir. It contains the sum of our wisdom. It is the collective essence of what we were, and what we are, and what we will be. This knowledge must be tempered with maturity. Its secrets will be shared with the many races around the galaxy but only when they are ready 
for such an awesome responsibility. Until that time, the legacy will be safeguarded by beings who have already demonstrated their worth. Wielding the disciplines of time, matter, and life. Humans will claim their birthright and become the stewards of the Sosiqui legacy. They will share its knowledge with the galaxy when the other races have proven their worthiness. We understand the others, and we will obey. Great fate lurks in the future of humankind. Elliot told me that often. You must be Gage Blackwood. I am. The service was very touching, Reverend. You wanted to see me? Yes. Throughout his long life, Elliot always believed that it was his duty to guide humanity toward a destiny. But ten years ago, when the Sirolans came to invite us into the symbiotry, he misjudged and insisted that they had come to conquer. Blinded by his zeal to protect Earth, he acted rashly. I was imprisoned on Vega Thalon, yes, I know. I put him there. Gage, when you came to see Elliot, prison had already eroded his faith in humanity and his will to live. But... He, he asked me to tell you that you were not responsible for his death. A great time is coming in our history, he said, and he believed that you would help to usher it in. That thought comforted Elliot in his last moments. I want to thank you for coming, Gage. Thank you, Reverend. He was a great man once. You know, his death really wasn't your fault. Gage, I wanted to thank you. I didn't expect to see you at my hearing, but because of your testimony, they commuted my sentence. You redeemed yourself. I only spoke the truth. Yeah, but you put your reputation on the line after everything I did to you. It's all in the past, Michelle. And we both know we can't change the past. Have you decided whether you're going to accept the Symbiatry's offer? No, I haven't. I told them I needed more time. Retirement's not your style, Gage. Besides, I think your ego would swell up too much if I had to call you Mr. Ambassador to the quote the lost sir. Arthur? Remember, Commissioner Jack wanted you at the ceremony early. Why did I agree to that? Why? Because you saved the world again! All by yourself, with absolutely no help from your friends. All right, all right, point taken. I won't forget to mention you. Oh, thank you, kind sir. And when will this magnanimous mention occur? After dessert or during the cab ride home? I couldn't have done anything without you. Even though Genghis Khan would make a big splash at our reception, I need to assume a more formal chameleon, guys. Something macho. Gage, do we have time to jump back and meet Dick Clark? Who? Never mind. He'll probably be at the party. <laughs>
Gage, your theme music is lovely, but uh, I think it's about time we played a little something for the kids. A two, a three, a two, three, four. Dun 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 Arthur. Dun dun dun. They called him Arthur. Dun dun dun. He was an artificial intelligence that was cool. Arthur. Dun dun dun. They called him Arthur. Dun dun. They thought that his singing was annoying, but he was no fool. Artificial as soap. Artificial as rope. Artificial, artificial. He will find the love that is the one for Arthur's the lonely one. Arthur. So, we have reached the end of the Journeyman Project 3, Legacy of Time, and the end of the trilogy. Thanks for watching, everybody. So, a few things. The reception that the series has received, especially since I started with Turbo back in late 2011, it's been great. I can't thank you enough for it. The Journeyman Project games share such a special place in my heart, and to some of you, I know it also shares the same feeling. And the fan base for it is still great, especially because, like, I have to thank, formally thank, the people over at the Journeyman Project Facebook and Twitter page, because if you go over there, they actually shared a bunch of my extra stuff over there, and that is incredible. The extra stuff being the history series I did on top of this. Wow, I never expected the amount of reception for that. I had such a great time working on it. All the different topics. I kept learning as I went. Like, two of the branches, I had no clue about anything, so I had to do intense research in order to understand what I was going to be saying to make sure that it was actually good in any respect. And I hope you learned something as well, because, like, each of the topics, like, they just spark some sort of curiosity in order to learn more. It's all starting from what Arthur says. It's great. It started off as curiosity for just one of the topics, which was Arthur talking about Thera, the very first comment that he ever says once you pick him up. And it's... Ah, oh, it's great. I love it. And it grew into so much more than I ever thought it was ever going to happen. I was like, maybe I could actually do the and it happened. I did it. So much work was put into it. it it's incredible. And of course, like in order to think about doing the series, I was actually inspired by another series that was done a couple of years ago. Like there was inspiration behind me actually doing this. So. Because of this, it's not really original that I did a history series, it's just that I did it for this game. And I want to give credit where it's due, be because without that inspiration, it probably would never would have happened. So I highly recommend you go over to this LP of Assassin's Creed 1 and 2, which also incorporate historical analysis of people, places things that were going on in both the Third Crusade with the first game and also the Renaissance period with the second game. He went into such great detail, it's stellar, it's all incorporated into what is going on to the game. He sees it and he'll start talking about it. I highly recommend you watch them because they're great and very well done. Another LP that I would like to recommend that is currently ongoing, at least at the time of this recording, is an LP of Deus Ex that I got started into watching. It's a very detailed LP, and actually has its own history series going on at the end of every video, which is kind of detached but still part of the video. Four different...
corners, as he calls them, in terms of discussion after every video, which have to do something within the video. And there's four different corners. One for conspiracy, conspiracy theories and all that, literature, books that are either within the game, reference within the game, or whatnot, all the science that has to go on within the game, because there's a lot of that, and also a little bit of philosophy. It's a great LP so far, and I'm going to be putting links to those channels and those series. They will be in the video description down below. I'm glad I was able to do something like this for this series of games, the Dream and Project series, because I have so much respect for these games. They're so great and wonderful, and I love them so much. And I don't know if I would ever be able to do something like this for another game. And I'm glad I was able to at least do it with this one. So, thank you everybody. Now, you might be thinking, what's after this? Well, it's gonna be a little bit of a break because this took so long in order to do and so much work, I kind of want a break. But there's still some stuff that we need to finish up with this game still. There's gonna be at least four more updates after this one. Um, don't know when they're coming out yet. I'll keep you posted. In terms of that, I may put something in the video description if you're watching this from the future. But in terms of the extra videos, there there's a lot of stuff I actually missed. Um, some of you have brought it up and I've kind of like boiled it down like I have to get to that still, and I will. Point taken. And there's a lot of stuff I missed. So you're going to be seeing that there's going to be one for each of the time zones because I missed enough at each of them. And also one final update that is going to be looking at all of the little extra tidbits and whatnot that went into this game. In terms of the next game after this, um, not going to really spoil it right now, but all I'm going to say is that it's going to be a lot more relaxed. A lot more. Think of it as its own vacation on top of a vacation. So, this has been it for the main portion of the Journeyman Project 3 Legacy of Time. I hope you enjoyed, and if you're still sticking around for the extra videos, I'll see you there for that. But if this is where you're going to be leaving, that is fine, and hopefully I will see you in whatever I do next. Take care, everyone.